I was born April the 1st, 1946, the first uh, of two uh, twins. Um, I, I'm not an identical twin, I'm a fraternal twin. My twin brother is three inches taller and blonde. <laughs> and uh, uh, my parents who are Thomas C. McClure Jr. and Cecilia Rose Gutierrez. I was born and raised here in Alexandria, Louisiana. Went to local grammar schools, uh, kindergarten, high school, junior high school, and uh, eventually came back to, to practice law. Actually, the hardest school I ever went to, uh, in my opinion, was L.S. Rugg Grammar School, which was three blocks away from where I lived. And as a result, we went to junior high school, which was, had only been opened for the second year when I went to Alexandria Junior High School. And the only straight A's I ever made, because I'd already had it at Rugg the year before, uh, and it, I skated for the first time in my life. Uh, we only went to high school for three years. Then I uh, wasn't sure what I really wanted to do, although I'd always been told that I was going to be a lawyer. And my twin brother was going to be a doctor. We are both now retired. He is a retired plastic surgeon. I am a retired attorney. My brother and I were pretty good athletes. My brother was a much better athlete. He was all state defensive end and went to Tulane on a football scholarship. I was a little bit of a quandary. I was student body, student council president at Bolton, which meant that I get to, got to announce the weekly assembly. Well, it was law day and uh, our Congressman Gillis Long was the speaker and he announced to the assembled gathering that he had given me an appointment to the United States Naval Academy, so uh, I said, I better go. <laughs> I'd never really planned on making the military my career. As a matter of fact, when I went to the air station in Dallas for my physical, they always do a, a psychological, and they asked me what did I plan on ending up as, and I said, I plan on ending up as a small town country lawyer in my mind, Alexander fit that bill. And sure enough, I went there and uh, my mother died suddenly from uh, leukemia. And uh, my father wanted me to come home. It was at the end of my second year. So, uh, dutiful son, I transferred. Well, by this time, my twin brother had uh, dropped off of the football team. He wanted to go to medical school and they wanted him to take all of his labs in the summertime. He wanted to get into medical school. So he resigned from his football appointment and I showed up and my poor father had two of them at Tulane at the same time. The United States Naval Academy is an engineering degree and I didn't want to be an engineer and so uh, I had to, I lost a lot of hours that I already had. And so I had to, and I didn't have some required courses like uh, an Eng uh, two semesters of English. So I took them at uh, Tulane in the summertime. Well, it turned out those two semesters were the second two semesters which were identical in course content to what I'd already had at the Naval Academy. Again, I did quite well, having been tested on it once already. Uh, and, and met the love of my life, uh, Judith Elizabeth Jenkins. And uh, her father was a music professor there. And so we dated and then I went on to law school and uh, we were married at the end of, and when she graduated, because if she, if we had married before then, she would have lost her tuition free ride at, at Newcomb. And uh, we couldn't afford that. So. After she graduated, we were married and then worked at LSU. Real legal work I remember that I had that, that I could have used a little more help with. My father was having bypass surgery or something. He had set up this closing for the land that Sears bought as part of the Alexander Alexandria Mall was brand thing, and they required that they wanted to own their place. They weren't going to lease it. So there was this big long list of requirements and uh, my father had done some of it but not all of it and I had to complete that. 
And the one thing I remember was we were uh, sitting around and there was a conference call with the title lawyers in Baltimore and they were going over my title opinion and it didn't have very many uh, notations in it because this, this family had owned it a long time. He said, well, why didn't you go back further? I said, well, I would except uh, you folks came down here during the recent unpleasantries and burned our courthouse and there are no additional <laughs> records that go back past those dates. And we all got a big laugh out of that. We had a case where the, there were two possibilities. One was these two people met up unbeknownst, unplanned with each other in a setting, a rural setting. One guy was huge, you know, 260, not an ounce of fat on. The other guy was smallish. Uh, there was really bad blood between these two families. and. The plaintiff, who was the smaller guy, said that when the, he looked up and saw this big fella coming up these steps into this place of business, that the big guy just hauled off and busted him in the, in the head and fractured the zomatic arch of his eye. And the big guy said, oh no, that's not what happened. Uh, yeah, we did meet up unbeknownst and the little runt was so scared he turned around and ran into a post. And <laughs> These two cannot coexist. And so we tried the case over in Leesville to a jury for a couple of days, and the jury came back. Verdict essentially was ran into a post, which was contrary to all the medical testimony. And so it was about a year later, I happened to be at lo locally and uh, saw a guy on a bench that looked familiar and looked at him and he said, you don't remember me? And I said, well, not really. He said, I was on that jury and I was, I was the foreman. I said, you were. And I said. Uh, I'd long since quit asking jurors right after a trial why they did what they did because it was always because I thought I had really set the hook on something. It was never that. And so I, I said, well, how did y'all come to the conclusion that you did? And of course, we'd done voir dire about, do you know these people? Any reason you can't? I, I, no, no, no. We're pure as a driven snow. And he said, well, you know, that, that plaintiff guy, he was a basketball ref. And he would always make the worst calls. <laughs> and that's the reason they ruled against him. So if you want to try your case to a jury, this can happen. The, uh, I got involved and came back here and you were supposed to, our family history was to be civically involved and, and of course involved in your church. Uh, I've been senior warden. I've, been when the, I'm an Episcopalian and when our diocese divided, I was the uh, vice chancellor, assistant lawyer. And then when the chancellor died, I became the chancellor until I retired. So, uh, and I went to general conventions as a deputy and I was very involved in my church and then uh, civic matters too. Uh, I, was a, I am a Kiwanian and do a lot with that. That's just part of what you do when you're a lawyer is to be involved in your community. You know people, they know you. Uh, it's just part of your civic uh, responsibility. But times change and, and it came time to, uh, to retire or at least consider doing it, which is something that's not easy to, to wind down a trial practice. Uh, did it over a number of years, but I had become very active in a feeding program that serves lunch every day. And by that I mean 365 days out of the year, without exception. Uh, the only time, two days they didn't serve was when a hurricane took the lights out and for two days and you can't open without electricity. And for the, the funeral of the, one of the founders uh, uh, of, of this ministry. And well, I'd served on the board and I had done a lot of cooking through civic clubs, church, and I liked it. And I didn't intimidate me at all to help cook for two, three hundred. Just didn't didn't start off that way, but built up to that. And I was on the board of this organization and could look at the financial statements and these people we're about to go out of business and we can't afford to pay our director. So I said, look, I'll I'll do it for free for at least three months. Well, I did it for three years. Uh, 
And instead of working five days a week, I ended up working seven days a week at, at, at this ministry. And as it turned out, the reason we were out of money was nobody knew we were out of money. The director wasn't spreading the word. And so I knew how to, I knew people in the media. I knew how to give a statement to the media and, and say, and we, with lots of help from the, di the Catholic Diocese, which is that this was under, they did a campaign and went from about a month and a half worth of revenue to now it's very stable and healthy. Uh, people started giving. All they needed to be was asked, and all it needed was somebody who had had some training and experience in communications. And basically, practicing law is communicating. I, uh, I'm still able to keep my toe in the water, so to speak. I'm a state civil service commissioner, been one for almost in December, it'll be uh, 18 years three terms. And I think I'll, I'll let, if, if they'll pick me one more time, I'll do it. I've, I've enjoyed it. It's, it's uh, been a little different. It's kind of a, it's a judge type thing in rural settings. So that's kind of where I am. Uh, I kind of try to advocate a little bit for cheaper drugs for people in my situation. Cancer drugs are just unbelievably expensive. But uh, Still involved in the church to some extent, although I'm no longer chancellor because I'm no longer practicing law. Award I, I, I got locally is the Clausiticus Award in 2016, which is they awarded the opening of court to a lawyer they deemed to have exemplified uh, good practice and community, some community involvement. It was more not so much my community involvement, but I. I I'm sure that factored into it too. Uh, reflect well on the profession and the professionalism. The, uh, I got an award for Jacob Landry in, I think it's 2001, for service to the bar, for being on the group insurance committee forever. And uh, I have one from, I had to pull it out, from the uh, Alexandria, humanitarian group for doing good stuff. I think it's primarily from uh, Manor House. Uh, I have I'm an honorary canon in the Episcopal Church in uh, probably 2004 from the, the then bishop. It's a, they give it to you and I have the canon. <laughs> it's a little toy canon uh, for, for service to the church. I'd like to be remembered as a competent, as a professionally, as a competent, honorable lawyer. As a father, as a husband, a, a dutiful husband who provided for his wife and family. Uh, his father educated, directed his children to become <clears throat> useful and educated and involved citizens. And I think I've pretty much done that and you know it comes down to kind of the summary of the law. I like to be known that uh, I love the Lord with all my heart and my neighbor as myself and beyond that that's all about all you can do.